What is going on, coaches? How are y'all doing tonight? Hey, I hope you're in for a treat because today we're finally going to put to bed that saying that the Air Raid teams cannot win championships because we actually have a championship coach slash player, and I want to get into the dynamics of that as well, that has won a national championship, a global championship, I'm going to say, in the Spring League. Uh, coach, is it okay if I call you coach? I should have asked that before we came in. I'm just so used to calling I'm going to call you coach because you're a quarterback coach and you're the backup quarterback for the lineman. Stan Bedwell. Uh, Stan, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you doing this, man. Thanks for the opportunity. Looking forward to actually talking a little bit of football because I've done so many of these podcasts in the last two weeks where everything is asking about my history and upbringing and stuff like that. And just decided to get on here with you and talk football. That That is what we're going to talk about. Uh if you want to talk about your history, that's great. It is very, very amazing. But I want to talk about really just taking all of those coaches that said you can't win games and championships of the air raid and punting them in the ass, pardon my French, because you can. And just walk me through that because, first off, how was the dynamic as QB coach slash backup quarterback? Like, were you ever competing for the starting role or were you just fine being the quarterback coach? And then if something ever happened, you could step in and fill how, how did that dynamic work? Well, I, I think it goes back because, you know, through my career in Europe, um, I played over there for, I was over there for 15 seasons. I had two that I just coached, but for the 13 seasons that I was over there playing, I, for 11 of them, I was head coach, offensive coordinator and quarterback. So I kind of had that experience of being a coach and a player at the same time, kind of like uh, Jackie Moon or something. But um, <laughs> you know, you know. So C Coach Mummy, he knew about my time in Europe. Obviously, um, he actually came to Rome, Italy, and spent a week with me back in 2016. But you know, he knew that I had handled being a player and a coach before. And basically where if you watch the spring league, you saw so many teams that ran two quarterback systems that maybe it was one quarterback first half and then one quarterback the second half. And, you know, from the beginning, Coach Mummy, you know, when he drafted Ryan Willis, he said, okay, this is obviously, this is the guy that we want to roll with. And then his thought process was, well, who can we get to come in accept that role of being the backup that they're not competing for a starting job and you know mentor ryan and i mean i guess when you think about it i've played in the air raid offense for about 20 years now so i probably played more games as an air raid quarterback than anybody on the planet so uh yes i guess i was a, a good option there to you know to come in and that's what he told me you know original text to me was Come be backup QB and QB coach, <clears throat> and then said, you know, I need someone to to mentor Ryan, coach him, and I mean, I I've done the game planning with him before, and you know, so it was a it's a really natural fit. I tried to talk him into just let me be the quarterback coach, but he wouldn't have that. He wanted me to be the backup too. Uh, okay, so did he have? Did he say anything like when he was coaching? I've how does how is Coach Mummy as a coach offensively was like, hey, Stan, you've got the quarterbacks. I'm not going to mess with them. You, you know what you're talking about. I'm going to go over here with the wide receivers. Or I'm going to go over here with the OL. Or I'm just going to be a CEO coach. How did that work? You know, it's it's a really interesting dynamic with Coach Mummy because he's very much he is that CEO coach. You know, of the offense on the defense. Basically, the defensive coordinator is pretty much the head coach on that side. You know, Tom Mason did a phenomenal job for us on defense. Our defensive staff was rock stars out there this year. But, um, you know, Mummy, it's the same stuff that you see that, you know, you talk about in all these videos. He's the guy that's going to – you're going to go out there, you're going to do new drill, you're going to do pat and go, then you're going to go, you know, the quick game, mesh drill, pull the, the lineman with you and the defense. We do our screen period together. Then we go back and we do the – routes on air things so you know exactly like it's taught to everybody um so really we're all together there working and you know he's not really a super hands-on at a point that he's running around telling you you know do this do that but at the same time he's he, he lets the coaches coach and you know he'll put an in input here and there but for the most part it's uh it's kind of collaborative with him that 
everybody already knows what to do. You know, it's not like we're changing things up day to day. We do the same thing every single day. So I want to I want to dive into that because the, the number yeah. one thing that I get from a lot of coaches when I talk about the air raid is how do you resist the urge of putting in new plays or, or tweaking different things and everything like that with high school kids? And I'm like, you just got to do it. How did you resist that urge for, for professional athletes? Because, you know, they they can everyone assumes they have a, a higher capacity of learning things and everything. But y'all, you just said you keep everything the same. How how are you able to, I guess, not make them bored? Well, you know, Coach has said this since I met him that, you know, to be good in this offense, you have to have a great capacity for boredom. Yep. And so, you know, you're really, you know, you're going out there and you're doing the drills, but it's really that just you know what you're going to do every day. So instead of kind of wondering what's the next thing coming up, since you already know what you're doing, you can just focus on the fine details of getting better at each drill. And, you know, when you're doing – when you're just throwing, say – um neutral at the beginning of practice you're really focusing on your drop and you're focusing on that ball placement you know you're going through all of your your reads in your head you know you're taking your body through those reads and for the receivers just really working that best release the best stick you know catching the ball tucking it turning straight up the field little things like that and you just really there's not a lot to it so you can just really focus on the fine details and doing it properly every single time making that the best rep you can do um you know, there, there's definitely input that comes. It's not, you know, as clinic talk of these are our plays. We'll never change a thing from here. I mean, we, you know, Ryan had a few plays that he liked from Virginia Tech. Um, he had a, a concept that he called maze. And, um, you know, we added that in. Coach Mummy loves the number six. So, of course, he's like, yeah, we'll call that open six maze. You know, he, he's got to throw six in there. But, um, <laughs> But, but, you know, so there's little things like that. And when they were in, um, yeah, I got to go down and work for a week with them in camp with the Renegades last year or two, however long that's been now. COVID's got me all mixed up. But yes, same here. I got to go same. down there. And, you know, Landry, Landry had a, a whole lot of input with bringing in things he liked. And so, I mean, Mummy is who he is, and he has the things that he knows works and that he believes in. But he's a smart guy, and he knows, okay – this guy's coming from here and he's got something good he wants to put in. If he's comfortable with it, do it. And that's, I like that. Yeah. Did you, are you like a purist in that sense? Like I know a lot of people are like, no, these are the plays. This is all we're going to run. I'm not going to do anything. If you bring it in, or are you more like him? Like, Oh, I do like that play. We're going to bring it in. And then are you, if you do bring it in, do you have to take one out? Or are you just like, we're just going to add that and then call it in these kind of situations? No, no, we, we just added it. I mean, we're always going to do, you know, for us this year, it was the, you know, we had six, we had shallow, 92, 94, 95. That was our drops. We kind of threw maze in with the drop backs. Um, and then, you know, quick game. So the inside, outside quick game. So we do, you know, stick corner. And then we would have, you know, hitch and Friday, which is the you know, fade flat concept. And that's really, that's about all we did. I had a, a quick game concept that I had called now that I guess Ryan, I really liked it. And then Ryan had ran something similar at uh, Virginia Tech or Kansas, one of the two. And so we decided to call that outlaw. And we ran, we ran that concept quite a bit. But, you know, you throw something out there and you say, this is a good concept. You go out there and the first time you run it, if it's a drop pass or something, mommy might, he might love it on paper. You drop the very first pass, perfect throw. Receiver just drops it. He's like, oh, this don't work. Take it out. But, <laughs> but you know, you, you do that and then you get a nice catch on it. And he's like, oh, that's a great play. We're going to start the game with it. So he's, you know, he, he can be influenced uh, quickly either way. So you better hope if there's something you put in that, that it works right away or you're going to have your feelings hurt. Oh, that's that's awesome. Fingers crossed. Hey, guys, you better catch this because I really like this play and I want it to stay in the playbook. Oh, so that's, please do it. Yeah, and you say that in jest, but that's very much the conversations that we have. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love that. Hey, coaches. Uh, first off, thank you so much for joining us. If you're in, if you're here, I'm with the man, Stan Bedwell. Uh, freaking national. Is it a world champion? Is it a, a national champ? I'm gonna call it world champion because it sounds better. And to me, the championship kind of looked like the um, the World Cup champion uh, trophy. I don't know why that's the first like thing. Like a I miniature World Cup trophy. Yes. So it's a, it's a <laughs> world championship uh, air raid coach slash player. If you have any questions for him, go ahead, put them in the chat. You know how we do things. And if this uh, if you're finding any good quality from this, please hit that uh, either like button if you're watching on Facebook or the thumbs up button on YouTube. Um, take me into the game planning. Now, on his course, Coach Mummy's course, Air Ray certified, you know, he, he blocks the, the field off in certain mm -hmm. zones. Did he stick with that, or did he tweak it and do something different now that, like, he's at the professional level or something? No, I mean, he – we definitely, as far as putting the script out, we do it the same. And, you know, I coached with him back at Bellhaven in 2015, and it's kind of the same. You know, our goal line script uh, – there's some scripts, like Yellow Zone, which is basically, you know, about the – about the six to the twenty yard line or so, um, the minus six to minus nineteen, minus twenty. Like we put that in the first, you know, for the first game, that never changes. Our coming off never changed at all. Um, okay. Goal line really never changed, and you know, when you even get to like red zone and orange zone, you're just tweaking here and there. It's like okay, last week we ran blue flip ninety two H wheel. Let, this week let's run. Um, Blue flip 92. All right, you know, it, it gets that symbol. And then really the the only thing ever that we just really change is that open script. But, uh, like, the, the best thing about this this year was um, – so we had our script for our first game. Um, lost that one to Glenville's team 27-20. And then that next week we're there. And, and Coach is just – he's so laid back whenever, you know, he trusts you. So how we scripted that second game is I just – I basically type up a script. I send it to him. I'm like, what do you think? He's like, yeah, that works. And then, you know, he's like, let's change play three to play six. And, you know, let's make this one a – let's tag Will on this instead of that. And, you know, it's really like I – mean, he's he was like that at Bellhaven too. He's just a very – he doesn't really subscribe to the whole we have to have the best game plan in the world scripted up to win we just have to ex execute the plays that we have on there so it's not a huge deal to him what plays you're running or what order you're running them in really. if you're gonna do a trick play he wants to do it early he wants to do that the first five or six plays but other than that i mean he's pretty laid back and even laid back enough to the point of and this will probably piss off everybody we played and beat um the third week so at, we took that same script, you know, we won the second week and he said, okay, that script was good. Let's just run the same script. Let's just change these two or three plays. <laughs> and then the, four, the third game or the fourth game, it's like, well, we won two straight. Let's do that again. And the fifth game, same thing. Uh, I had a, a Derek Kent. He's the head coach at a Rochester Community and Technical College. Uh, I've been his offensive coordinator on two different occasions. He came down and stayed with us for a week and kind of, you know, followed followed the team around, and I remember we got back from a got back from like lunch, and you know, me and Mummy were we, we were sitting down to put together our game script for the week. That's the week that we beat Glenville's team, uh, forty six to thirty nine in overtime. That was a great. And uh, we got in, and Coach just said, "I'm gonna go," because it was pretty hot. He's like, "I'm gonna go, just change clothes real quick in my room, and I'll come back." By the time we got back, we were already done with the with the game script for that week, you know, it was probably four minutes. And then nice. you go out and you put up, you know, 500 plus yards. And, you know, there's really not – the genius in it is not the play calling and the order of the plays. It's just the execution of what you're doing and not really worrying about even calling the best play. It's just because – Obviously, all the plays are good, and you wouldn't have them in your offensive system. Yeah. All right. So let me. Do you think also you're probably getting? I would. I'm just guesstimating here about a hundred reps through that three week or four week period where you kept the game plan the same from practice and in the game. Do you think the players just got like really comfortable with the game plan? Is like, oh, this is the same thing we did last week in practice. 
two weeks ago and the, doing the same rep, uh, reps and stuff like that, we're getting really good at the little technical details now. And that's how y'all were able to put up so many points and win, like, what, six in a row? Yep, one, one six straight after losing the first one. Yeah, I mean, there's that. There's just being comfortable with what you're doing. And, you know, that's the thing that, that often um, – you know, we would get together on say we had a game say on a Saturday on Sunday we'd go eat lunch or something and we would just draw up all these great ideas and it's never an idea because their defense plays this we're gonna do this I mean I don't think Coach Mummy even was on our huddle account in the spring league <laughs> I mean he you know he he doesn't concern himself at all with the other team and what they're doing defensively he says that you're you're teaching quarterbacks to look at ghosts because he's like. You're teaching them what you think is going to be there, but you have no idea what they're going to do. And he's like, just stick to the progression, go go through your reads. And, you know, he, he actually, going that week into um, playing the Conquerors that second game, the only team that beat us, so we get that rematch with him. He tells Ryan Willis, our starting quarterback, he's like, no matter what, you are not allowed to watch any film of the Conquerors this week. And, you know, my, my whole thing from the beginning was just pushing, like, you know, trust the process. There's – there's method to the madness and he threw for 440 yards that week and he put up 46 points against the Jerry Glanville defense. And he's no slouch when it comes to that side of the football. No, it's not. No, he's not. He's, he's a living legend on that side of the, uh, the ball. Dude, that, that was an amazing, what's it like being in that game though? Like on, on the sideline and stuff like that, knowing what's on the line, how they beat you the first time is, are you like, Ball to, are you just as relaxed as Coach Mommy? Are you a little bit tighter, uh, more involved? I guess that's a bad way of saying it. But how, how is that dynamic on the the field? Uh, I think I felt like we complemented each other really well because we're you know I'm definitely a purist of of his system, and I've been around guys that have coached with him or around him and. You know, they – I mean, everybody respects Coach and what he does, but then there's a lot of people that have their kind of own, own ideas of, well, it would be better this way and that way. And I've always stuck, you know, to the reads, and I, I truly believe in the system I've had. It made my career as a player. I never would have done anything without this system, honestly. And so we both are coming from that same, you know, headspace of what we want to do, and you know, we both believe in the system. But the thing is, obviously, we see things differently. And so it kind of becomes a good contrast that, you know, I'm there basically in his ear almost between every play, like saying, you know, let's run this, let's run this. And a whole lot of the times we do it. Sometimes he looks over and tells me to shut up. And, you know, it's uh, – <laughs> but, but, I mean, we, we have such a good relationship, like, off the field that – yeah, in, in the championship game at one point, he told me to, you know, shut the F up, turns over and looks at me. But we were both mic'd. And uh, me, me and Ryan were mic'd for the championship. And this was early in the game. And then he just starts laughing. And he's like, I'm trying to give him some good TV. Which, you know, I guess it was on TV. But, I mean, it's it's never – he's a guy that doesn't really get upset. He's he's just a lot of fun to – a lot of fun to be around, you know, off the field. He's a lot of fun – to play for a lot of fun to coach for and i mean all the guys loved him i don't think there's any guy on our entire team that that they might tell you they questioned his philosophy on things um at the beginning but and i think almost any normal coaches would because what we did this year was from a practice standpoint it's pretty extreme and i'm i'll talk to you about that if you want to but Heck it's yeah. something that you know everybody else was like what the hell are we doing? But then you just start to see the benefits of it, and it's working, and it's working, and it's working. Dude, stop teasing. What What did y'all – are you talking about, like, a lot more on-air uh, shorts, just helmets? What? Um, okay, so we we lost our first game. Mm -hmm. Then we go out. And he'd always give us a lot of days off. Like, say, our first game was on a Thursday. Most teams are back practicing by Saturday. You know, he figured it out. Well, okay. We played our first game on a Thursday. The next one was on a Friday, I believe. And he's like, okay, you guys are off until Tuesday. 
you know, he's like, he's like, come back Tuesday, and that gives us three days, and then you know, game day. And uh, so we get there on that Tuesday, and uh, you know, some guys went back home and things like that. But we get there on that Tuesday, we go and we practice. So we would always practice. Um, two teams would practice at 10 a.m. Two teams would practice at noon. So mm-hmm. in the spring league, you're always like, you're only on half the field because you're oh, splitting wow. the field with the other team. You're splitting the field with uh, usually the team you played the week before. Obviously, you're never out there with the team you're about to play. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we are we go over, we have our practice, and then at 6 p.m. we'd always have our team meetings. Usually we'd run – or we'd go like 5, 5 p.m. we would watch practice. 6 p.m. we'd have a quick dinner, and then like 6.30 or so we'd have a team meeting where we look at special teams and then, you know, talk about whatever we needed to as a group. We get into that meeting after the first practice of our second week – and he said, you know what? We're not going to go practice anymore this week. We might not. He said, uh, we might not be the most prepared team, but we're going to have the freshest legs and we're going to be the most excited to go play football and we're going to kick their ass. And y'all only practiced Tuesday and had Wednesday and Thursday off and then played on Friday. Yeah. And <laughs> and won the game. Yeah. And then he was like, well, why would we change it this week? So we're going into our third game against the Alphas, who are the only undefeated team left in in the spring league already, or at least in our division, I think in the whole league. They were 2-0. and They had just beat the Conquerors, who beat us, you know, in the first week. And he's like, well, why are we going to change it? It worked. So what we would do is, you know, if it's, we'd have one practice at the beginning of the week. Then the second day would just be – We'd do walkthroughs or we'd get up in the morning. We would do like a walkthrough and then we'd come back in the evening and do a walkthrough again. So we walked through our game plan two times on that second day. And then on the third day, the typical walkthrough day, we'd just go out and kind of jog through our whole like offensive script and then we do cards for the D. So it's kind of like a light scrimmage. You know, we just literally warm up and then say, okay, we're going to run through our script. And that's it. And then we play the games. But this whole thing about fresh legs really started paying off. We go play that the undefeated end. team. We beat them 47 to 7. Hell, I even took a touchdown that game at 36 years old. You know? What, what, what was the play? <laughs> was it six? Was it no, mesh? My, mine was – my touchdown was uh, – we called 31. And we had a – that we were out of trips. And I just thought there was a little bit of leverage. So, I just – I threw – Signaled a, a Randy screen to our H and threw it out to him, and then he made a couple of guys miss and ran in and scored. It was just me being selfish, trying to get a touchdown. Well, it worked. I'm pretty pretty sure our running back could have scored too. But uh, <laughs> you know, in, anyways, I mean, we stay with that the rest of the year. We have one one day out on the field practicing, and we didn't even go pads that day. And then we would do. It'd be a practice day. We we had you know we go a little longer on that practice day. We'd go about two hours and fifteen minutes. Where usually he's about an hour and a half guy. Yeah, I was going to say two hours and fifteen minutes. That's 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 big time for him. I, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm saying that tongue in cheek because usually for most high school coaches or coaches in general, two hours and fifteen minutes is a light day. Yeah. For Coach Mummy and the way he thinks and his philosophy and you as well, uh, yeah. that's a very long day. Well, but the pace is a bit different too because it's not just that sprinting going crazy pace because, um, you know, spring league, you only have 38 guys on the roster. It's a very thin roster. So with that, you know, there's only two quarterbacks out there. So we don't have, you know, five quarterbacks throwing to everybody. So when we do say quick game, we'd say, all right, open 62 Friday. Me and Ryan are there. Ryan's like, okay, I got the, I got the flat route. And I'm like, okay, I got the fade. Then we'll turn and we'll throw the the backside slants. And then we'll both throw a ball to the backs. And then we'll go, you know, flip it, go the other way, things like that. So it was a – it's a lot slower pace just because of the numbers that we had. And also the spring league didn't really allow us to – you could only run no huddle in the final four minutes of the half or if you were down by nine points or more. And I remember Coach – he said it at the beginning of the year, and, I mean, I think he said it in jest, but I don't really know. He was like, we should just spot the other team two touchdowns to start every game where we can play fast. He probably wasn't saying that in jest. That was probably uh, one of his strategies. Like his strategy of, of 
what was that one game I read in that in, in the book where he went I for like three quarters to tie yeah, yeah, for, out for a half and he just, when he was at Valdosta, I believe. <laughs> it was Valdosta or Iowa Wesleyan. They yes, went, it was. It was Valdosta. No, no, no. Western Iona. And then he just jumped out. The, the, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he probably wasn't kidding. But yeah, I mean, I mean, he, he definitely has a different way of thinking about things. It's he doesn't really concern himself with what you think football should be or what everyone else does. You know, he he definitely is a guy that is sure of himself and his thoughts, and he's like, oh, I think it's going to work like this, so this is what we're going to do. But you know, and and here's where I, I really started to see the genius in this is. Our final four games of the season, we were losing at halftime to the last three regular season games plus the championship. We were losing at halftime, and we were down by two scores in the fourth quarter of all four games. And all four games, we came back. And, and the funny thing is we're down two scores, so that means, hey, now we can play. So, you know, we'd play fast, and we would move it down and score. I mean, he, did it on he always said – and. We we believed that you know if we could play fast then we're gonna score on anybody anytime, but you know once you start to look at that where you think like okay this whole fresh legs thing, it's like maybe there's something to it. We come out the first half we're a little bit sloppy because we didn't practice as much as the other teams, but when you're playing in May and June, it gets pretty dang hot outside. Yes, it does. And when you got these teams practicing some of them four times you know, before their game and they're wearing full pads out there. Yeah, maybe they're really prepared. And in that first half, they, they get a bit of a lead on us, but you could see it in the, you could feel it in the third quarter and into the fourth that every single opponent we played for all four of those comebacks would start tiring out at the end of the game. And the fact that we had only practiced once, maybe, you know, that's, that's the most logical thing that you can think of to say why this worked so well because we were just hitting our stride when they were getting exhausted. And I love it. It's like, it's like if it's a marathon, everybody else is sprinting, and y'all are just coasting at a nice, steady pace. And then when you get to that final turn, the fourth quarter, that's when you uh, you put it on them and just start scoring a barrage of points. Yeah, and, you know, you're doing so many of those walkthroughs that, you know, just a literal. In Sometimes it would be like in the meeting room of the hotel where we're, you know, our – X, X and Z receiver are three yards from the tackles because there's no room in this room and they're just <laughs> walking their, you know, they're walking their 10 yard out at three steps before they have to turn because there's no room. But the fact is just mentally we're going through the game script over and over and over. You know, we probably have four walkthroughs per week of the entire game script plus the run through the day before. So we're just running the same plays so much and just taking the middle reps that there's nobody that's going out there and having to think when they play. They just go out and do it. And you're using the same script and game plan from the week before, so they're getting it. So it's like compounding. I, I know I said that really weird. Compounding every single week where they're just – they could probably do it in their sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really. And, I mean, and that's – I'd say if there's one thing to describe, like, mummy's thought process is, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So it's like, well, that game plan worked last week. And now in the fifth, the fifth game of the year, uh, we were playing the Aviators, and they had a great game plan. And it took us – I think the fourth quarter was our first touchdown that we scored. We were struggling. We were over there trying to figure things out. And, I mean, it's like they were in our huddle. But, I mean, they, they, they were coached well. They knew what we were doing. So, you know, that sixth game, he said, okay, now it's time to – now it's time to put together something different because, all right, they caught up with us. So we changed our – but we changed our open script. I mean, the rest of it pretty much stays the same. But the way we did it really is we try our best to get through our – we'd always go 12 plays on the open script. We'd do our very best to go straight down that. Of course, if we get to a third and long or a different field zone, then we might come out of it. Maybe. But, you know, once we get through that script, now it's saying, you know, I'd say probably a third to half of the time we're just saying – you know, we're looking at Ryan and saying, open check. You know, so you line up and open and you get us in the good play. Or blue 30 check, you know. And 
it's we ran all of our runs just to one side so we ran zone and iso to the left we ran counter to the right then we had draw and number one rushing offense in the entire spring league so yeah okay that's another thing that i was surprised by how much y'all actually ran the ball you ran it a little bit more than i thought you would coming you know me and i'm, I'm not alone when we heard that coach mummy was getting this we're like oh He's finally he he's gonna he's gonna be the first time in the history of any professional sport where there's gonna be no running. It's just like <laughs> all passes. And then sometimes, and I saw it back in the uh, XFL too. He he, he ran what well, in the XFL he had like a wildcat package on the goal line. Uh, yeah. He he's running the ball. It's like who who is this and and what happened to Coach Mummy? Well, he listens to his, you know, he'll talk. And, uh, he's always, I mean, he definitely has the last say so on everything. But again, he's a smart guy. He listens to coaches. In the XFL, they were running um, this old single wing formation that uh, yes. it was brought. Uh, Jeff Jagodzinski was coaching the O line, and he had been, you know, he's former Packers offensive coordinator, just Boston College head coach, just brilliant guy. He's on those air raid certified days. He's the O line coach on there doing the whiteboard yeah. sessions with Coach Money. <laughs> But, you know, he uh, – before he came to the XFL, he was coaching at a small high school. And that small high school he was at when he got there, they are like, you're our offensive coordinator. And he's like, we don't really have guys that can throw. We don't have this much skill. So he went and learned the single wing. Nice. And he – I was in – you know, that was when we were in Arlington uh, at the Renegades training camp. The film that he's showing the guys to install this is this small high school in the midwest and he and he's showing him all these cutouts and you know you got landry jones there joking that he's going to be the fullback in it and stuff and it was just you know a lot of fun but i mean that's you know any coaches will tell you that high school coaches are among the best not the best coaches you're going to find anywhere so you know if coach thinks it's going to work or if it's different he just likes being different you know if he thinks it's going to work then he's like well this is unique let's do it I, and that's why he's had success. Now, before we go on, there are a couple of questions okay. that uh, some of the coaches would like. Um, Coach Birdwell wants to know, what is maze and outball? All right. Um, so if we would do – let's start with maze. Okay. All right. So we're doing it out of two by two, so out of open. And – is there anywhere to draw on this? If you it. are you on your computer? I am. All right. Open up a tab and go to awwapp.com. It's like a whiteboard app. Okay. What, what, what's that again? Awwapp.com. Okay. It'll bring it up. And then once you get there, if you go to the bottom of the screen, there's a share button. If you click that, you can share your screen and it'll pop up on my end and I will show it and you can uh, you can draw it up. And coaches, while he's doing that, if you have any questions, again, put them in the chat. Uh, if you're just joining us, we are talking with Stan Bedwell. We're talking about Air Raid, the Spring League, all of that stuff. If, you like, if you're taking away anything from this or enjoying it, please hit that thumbs up on YouTube and that like button, share it on Facebook, all of that stuff. I'm having a blast right here, and we're fixing to learn Maze and Outlaw. All right, so I guess I'm on here. I'm not seeing. If you look on the bottom of the screen is where it says share. If you come back to the stream yard, and if you hit share. Oh, just to share my screen? Yeah. Okay. And you should be able to share like a, a tab or something like that. I'm sure. It's always doing this. No. Johnny, what's going on? The coach plays. What's up, guys? Watching y'all on my dead period vacation. Heck yeah, man. Enjoy your vacation. Where are you vacationing from? David, high fives and butt slaps. I love it, man. I freaking love it. Uh, while you're pulling that up, Coach Young wants to know, hey, fellas, looking forward to some info I can translate into the eight-man game. Just got my first head coaching job last week. Congrats. If you were to put any air rate play in an eight-man, what what would you put in? There we go. Eight-man, so that is uh, how many eligible receivers do they have there? I think it's just like a center attack, a guard, and a guard. 
So then, so you got about four guys um, after the quarterback that you can get the ball to. I mean, I always love that any lower levels or you know things are less guys. I think shallow's great. Love it. I think the shallow is great because you got the vertical, you got something underneath, and you got an intermediate route. Um, that's you know vertical, shallow. That's I'd always start there with almost any any lower level just because the shallow. So I, I went while I was in Indiana and worked with a with a youth team, and the one thing we tried to teach them was shallow. Okay. There is it, go, is this sharing for you? Yes, sir. It is. It's already up. Go ahead and start okay. drawing. That old line's really far away, but we'll just do this the best we can anyway. <laughs> Okay, so this is six maze. So we got a six-step speed out like we would do with mesh with the Z. And basically, the quarterback's reading that. If we get the corner down, he's just not even going to pay attention to that. The Y is running a shallow. And then what the H is doing is he's going to mesh with him. And after the mesh, he's going to go and he's going to settle over the center at about 12 yards. And then we do the old school shake route over here. Okay. The back's just doing a, a check swing. So this kind of goes all over the place compared to most area concepts. But this is our first read is kind of the peak. But, you know, if you get a certain look, you're just staying away from it. But peak or one. And then eyes are going to drop straight over then. And you're basically reading. This will be your two to three. Just the picture here between the shake and the shallow. And then, I mean, if you ever got to it, it'd be four, and this would be your check down five. So it's a bit different than most of the array concepts where it'd be just reading it straight across the field. Yeah. But, you know, really you think of just, I know pretty much pre-snap if I'm throwing this, and if not, I'm dropping back. And it kind of looks like almost a mixture of shallow and mesh, but we're really just kind of reading it kind of looking at the shallow unless they sit down on it. Then we're seeing if we have a spot behind. Then we're I like there. that. Yeah. And he called this six maze. Yeah. Like M A Z. Why do you call oh. it six though? Cause I don't see any like six. Well, we, we called outlaw six too. And you're going to see that in a second and be like, what the hell? It's because, <laughs> Co it's because coach loves the number six. Okay. While you draw this up, what would you probably know this already? If you just hit that trash can, you can just delete everything. Oh. Um, what'd you call more, six or ninety-two? Oof. You know, we when I was at Bellhaven, and I did an actual study of the first two years at Mummies at Bellhaven because I was there a second year, and that year, or when I looked that up, it was um, it was pretty stunning. It was like twenty-six percent of snaps was six, twenty-four percent was. Um, 31 so inside zone left and then it was like 12 percent mesh and so you know you were already at like two-thirds of your snaps was just those three you know with us this year i i would say it was probably pretty even um really? again a lot of it was too was ryan calling we probably called more quick game than than i've seen in a long time with you know this offense we called a ton of quicks but a lot, and part of that's because Ryan really loved it, and Ryan caught quicks a lot for himself. Um, and after you draw that, I want to talk about like you—you you gave the professional quarterback a lot of leeway. Oh, that's going to piss off the the offensive line, Pierce, right there. Just well, you know, you know what? If they want to come and draw five circles on here, they can. I'm not even drawing a protection or a defense. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever I mean, you no do, disrespect. whatever defense you do, do not put the standard too high that even though defensive coordinators on Twitter bitch about, like, how does offensive coaches do that? You watch their film, they're in the too high six in the box, and somehow they can get 11 in the box at the snap of the ball. I don't understand it. <laughs> so this is something I had originally – I came up with in 2017 when I was in Finland. And then Ryan had done something similar. And, and so, you know, he, he, he had done this with like just kind of the two man concept there, but it's really, I call it now always because the way I would teach it is, so we just basically got the, you know, the five yard speed cutouts, we got the sticks and then we just got a one step slant, basically looking to 
bas- he's basically just kind of a dump to grass. But the way that I would teach it would just be pick your guy. So pre-snap, look at all of these. And we would convert these if it was a press. This would automatically convert to a fade. That's the only thing that would convert. But essentially, the thought process was find your best matchup and throw it right now. Oh, and God. so that's why I caught it now. I guess they called it outlaw at one of the previous places Ryan had been because of the out routes. But you know, essentially, what we'd do if we had, um, say, you know, if we were running it out of two by two, then we'd have, you know, the the Y there. And the way that I originally ran it was like this. We'd call like, you know, 31 now. So we'd make it an RPO. But, and, and we ran it like that. Um, you know, we ran it like that some in the spring league too. I like that. So pick your favorite matchup now. And if you don't like it, just hand the ball off. Yeah, essentially. Or if you don't like any of them, you know, you're just giving the ball. But really, I mean, it's just it's such an easy, such an easy concept to basically find the leverage that you like, throw to find that uncovered guy, find whatever the hole is, and throw it. And if it's not there, just hand the ball off. Sometimes I swear to you, not sometimes, all the time, we make football a lot more difficult than it has to be. Yeah, and. You can win championships by practicing only one time a week and doing nothing but walkthroughs and reusing the same game plan over and over again. So you said the last uh, team, they they had you there for a little bit. What do you think that they – why do you think they had you locked down? Was it more of an offensive thing, just wasn't executing, or did they really have a good game plan? And if it was the game plan – what was it? Was it like they decided to go more man or blitz or mix things up? What What do you think? Um, you're talking like say those last four games where maybe we struggled a little bit early. No, no, no. You the last, second to last game. Oh, okay. the, yeah, the aviators game. game. That game. Yeah. Well, they pretty much just knew what we were doing every single play because we hadn't changed anything for a month. So, you know, they were – and they did – to be fair, they had a really good defense. Both times we played them, we scored our two lowest offensive outputs of the season were both games – and that was Aviators who didn't win a game all year. But their defense was coached very well, and they had some good players. Um, you know, they had a really good defense. Probably – I think anybody on our team would probably say it was the best defense we played at the spring league. But – I don't know. Uh, I don't want to sound smarter than I am and say, well, they were doing this and that. If you talk to Ryan, he could probably tell you more. If you talk to me or Coach Mummy, yeah, we're not going to tell you much. We're just like – it. we just – I mean, the the amount of, you know, that we, we just don't really care too much about what the defense runs. Yeah. I was it's about to say, not, you'd probably say air to the side of our players just didn't execute instead of giving the defense – too much credit. Well, well, I mean, there's credit if they're stopping us in general, you know, It's but it's just, you know, they're stopping us doing what they do. It's our job to find something that's going to work. And, I mean, that's kind of that – we had that uh, shootout with Glanville's team, and I know it made uh, – I saw, like, a Twitter thing. You don't even really realize it in the game, but it was, like, something like five of the last seven snaps were touchdowns between the two teams. Yeah. And, you know, what we just realized was – well, we had one of our receivers come over to us, um, and he was like, hey, you know, I'm not getting outside vertical. We're down by like 11, you know, in the fourth quarter. He's like, I, I can't win vertical outside. He's like, but if we can – if I can run a post, I've got that leverage to do it. And so then it's like, well – so he, he tells me that on the bench. I go over to Mummy. I'm like, hey, uh, you know, Mookie, Michael Darius. I'm like, he, he says that, you know, that's there. And it's like, you know – Okay, well, it's obvious if you're going to run four verts and you got a post, he's going to be coming straight into that seam route. So we're like, okay, well, let's just sit the seam route and post over top. We do that first play of that drive, and we go like – they have like a 70-yard touchdown or something. The next drive, because they go down to score, the next drive, we just say, okay, now let's go six and go Y sit, Z post, and we literally run the exact same play to the other side, and we throw like a 70-yard <laughs> touchdown there. And then in overtime, because then we started talking, we're like, well, what are different ways we can do this? 
well, we've ran shallow, but we haven't posted over the dig. So in overtime, we post over the dig and we hit that to our X uh, and it gets us down to the five yard line. And then that's what, you know, sets up the game winning touchdown run. And so, you know, so often, or if you look in the championship game, did you, did you get to watch the championship game? I watched the, I watched some of it. I'm still going through. I'm going, I'm trying to find, I'm not big time. I don't have the all 22 and everything. So I'm piecing them together mm-hmm. on the uh, YouTube. I, I know that, so. I know that AJ is uh, with the tempo, with the tempo yeah. thing they have. I, you know, I just finished tagging everything off for him and sent him yesterday the, uh, all of the cuts, and I know that he's getting that all put up on tempo. So I'm firing that back. Up. And I'm hey guessing guys, that's for the certified guys. Anybody, if you haven't uh, signed up for tempo yet, you're, you're doing yourself, and I, I would think you're, you're programming to service by saving so much space. You can put everything there. It, it is unbelievable. So if you haven't already, check it out. Uh, I think it's tempo.com. You, you need you need to do it. But dude, I I, I just love that you won on a on a run. Well, well, the and well, and then the game-winning touchdown in the championship. Um, it's actually because they knew when, and, and I saw somebody post about this. They're like, they were like, the quarterback literally yells the play every, you know, because he's mic'd up. They're like, he's at the line yelling what the concept is, almost every single play. And you know, he, what we started realizing was when you know when he'd yell outlaw or give the signal for outlaw, they would literally the corners would just work outside they knew what was coming you know they, they started they they knew that call that's uh-huh. when they knew so we had the talk on the sideline before that last drive we're like all right we're gonna run outlaw we're gonna say outlaw you know ryan's gonna yell it really loud outlaw 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 but when he does we're gonna do outlaw and up both those out routes are gonna go up but we're not gonna give a signal for up we're just gonna say outlaw and <coughs> basically what I think what what Ryan ended up doing, because we were just like, yeah, we say outlaw and do it. And Ryan, I heard him tell him that, which kind of scared me because I thought it might confuse him. He's like, if I give you the signal, it's outlaw. But if I yell it, it's outlaw and up. But we're out there and, uh, you know, he, he yells outlaw, outlaw, outlaw. He does it in the corner, sits down in that two thinking it's there. And then he hit that whole shot in between and that's the game winning touchdown. So, oh, wow. and that's not things we talked about. You know, people talk about like, these big halftime adjustments. And it's not really that it's more of just when we have concepts, we're running that they're jumping. Another one that we, we did that um, came up with this. Cause every, anytime, you know, we'd run mesh, like say we're in blue and we'd run 92, we cheat that X in. Mm-hmm. And so we started, you know, the last two games or so, anytime we do that, everybody, you know, and the fans and everybody <laughs> in the stadium was like, it's mesh, it's mesh. I just kind of had the idea. Um, I remember I was driving back because I live down on the Arkansas Texas border, and so instead of flying down to Houston from Indy, I uh, I drove back, saw my parents and my dog for a day or two, and then drove the rest of the way to Houston. And if, if you guys did that, I think people from the area did that because I didn't see the point in flying to Indy, flying back to or flying from Indy to Houston, fly back to Indy, then have to drive back down. So while I'm driving, I called mommy and I just, I just had a random idea. I was like, well, what if we go blue 95 and we have the X cheat in, but he runs a corner route, you know, so it's blue 95 X corner. The X is going to run a corner. We have the H out on the shoot and we kind of high load that. Then we've got the cross coming over. And, um, you know, he, he's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it. And that's usually how far those talks go is you have something. He's like, okay, sounds like a good idea. Let's put it in. You know, Coach um, Dale Carlson, our receiver coach, had a great idea for – it might have been the biggest play of the last regular season game, which we needed to win to lock, a, lock in the championship game in uh, Houston. And we've been running that surge screen. And he, he came up with an idea to run um, a box <coughs> off a of surge. And we hit that on the game-winning drive for about a 50-yard game. And so, you know, it's, it's really that simple with coaches – you have something and you say it and he's like, sounds good. Let's do it. And usually that's what it is. It's not like I have this whole new concept. It's okay. They're covering mesh because they see this. Let's have this as a counter to how we line up to mesh. And it's more so, you know, having the Fox off of surge, let's come up with this counter off of surge. So that's the stuff that, you know, you can really get coach to listen to you on is okay. Well, that's good because we're going to run surge. We're going to run mesh. 
what some things to switch it up again for the defense. And um, are you making those in the game plan, or is that something like in the middle of the game? You're like, oh man, I see that they're doing this. Let's go ahead and tweak this thing right now in the middle of the uh, the next drive and catch them on it. Both, both. I mean, uh, the ninety five. You know the. The 95, and, and a lot of times you'll even come up with it right in the game. And he's like, that's a great idea. Let's save it for next week. Don't forget it. And, you know, and then you do it the next week. But it's, you know, it's it's definitely, you know, mommy will just shock you sometimes if he'll have some idea of, yo, let's, let's change this route when we do this. And it's going to work, and it works. Or, you know, if myself or Coach Carlson or, you know, Gunnar White, our offensive line coach, if there's something that we see in the game and we go up to it, then, you know, we're like, yo, this is a good changeup. Or any of the players. You know, Ryan had a ton of things he saw. Obviously, that Conquerors game, we probably came back and won that because of uh, Michael Darius, our ex receiver, saying, hey, I can win on the post, so let's make this adjustment. And, you know, it's it's really just whatever's going to work. And then – all of almost all of those games, we finished them. Like if you watch the game-winning drives, most of them aren't even chunking it down the field. A lot of times, it's running thirty-one seven straight times or thirty-five four straight times, five straight times. You know, it's just whatever works, man. I still can't believe you ran the ball in like certain plays one direction and certain plays the other direction. That and like you said, it number one rushing team in the league. Uh, talk about the players. Like, that has to be a, a total shift from what they're used to in college and professional, other professional teams to then come to your team and y'all are like, yeah, hey, we're just going to give you formation and then you just call whatever it is. Or you can mm -hmm. change things on the fly when you see something in the game. Just talk to us and maybe we'll change it. it did, was there a big culture shock with that? Or is that how it is usually everywhere else they're at and they're just like, oh, this is just another day? I can't talk about what it's like everywhere else they're at because I haven't been to any of those places. <laughs> they, um, I didn't but, know if they said anything like, "Yo, this is this is crazy." I mean, they just liked how simple it was, and they like, and uh, you know, coach's philosophy is that he wants everybody to be happy. He's definitely a player's coach all the way. You know, after after every game, he's got you know a few cases of beer outside his room, and he's like, you know, go get some drinks. Now, this is this is for pro football players, not for you high school kids. <laughs> Stay away from alcohol and drugs. They're bad. But, um, Always. but yeah, you know, so, I mean, he's just a guy that's really – the guy you go knock on his door at 9 p.m. at night, any guy on the team, I'm like, oh, you know, he's like, well, well hey, Stan, come on. Like, well, I, I hung out with him all the time. You know, a few of us are have the good relationships, but it could be that player that never really talks to him outside of practice. They knock on the door and he's like, oh, well, come in. Let's come in. We're watching – um. It's like the Curse of Oak Island on the Discovery Channel was like his favorite TV show. <laughs> and then he'd bring him in and just give like a history lesson of this little island in Canada that has all these treasures buried in it. And I mean, he's, you know, he is what you expect him to be as far as, you know, off the field with the, uh, there's just a lot, in it, much, much like Leach, there's so much in his mind and so many other interests that he has outside of football. But yeah, with the players, man, it's, um, you know, guys know they can go to him at any time. They can joke with him about things. And, you know, he, his whole thing is he's like, I want guys to feel like they're still in high school because everybody enjoys high school. Football. And he's like, even at the pro level, I want them to feel like they're still in high school because that's when you have fun. I want every, all my players to have a good time. And, you know, he's like, when, yeah, we play a game on a Thursday, the next game Saturday. Why would I have you here with the other teams practicing on Saturday or Sunday when we don't play for six days? I want you to go back and see your girlfriend if that makes you happy or go see your dog or go out and party for the next three days. What, whatever it is that you enjoy doing that makes you happy, go do that. And then, you know, when it gets to Tuesday or whatever day it is, we're going to go practice our butts off. We're going to be refreshed and then we're going to walk through, stay off our legs the next day and then that, run through man. the game plan and then go out and, you know, on game day, he wants us. I've heard, I know a lot of coaches just like, get up early, get a good breakfast. On game day, he wants you to sleep in as long as you can. He's yeah. like, get rest. Granted, we did have some 10 p.m. kickoffs. Yeah, you so, did, man. 11 oh p.m. kickoffs. So, Tivo. Uh, you know, what he'd do on those is he'd have us go the night before, we'd do our walkthrough. We'll do our night before walkthrough at um, 
like midnight. He'd call it midnight madness. And we'd go out in front of the hotel and basically we would do like, we'd be out there and be like him and his little dog Hawk. Sometimes his wife Jacqueline would come out and we're just all out there like throwing noose at midnight in front of the hotel. And you got the O-line doing like a blitz pickup period and everybody's just kind of joking and wondering what the hell's going on. But, you know, it's, it's fun, but his whole thought process was let's keep guys out late so they don't go to bed too early so they don't wake up too early. Let, let's keep them out where they're not going to get to bed till at least one or two, then maybe they'll sleep till 10 or 11. They're still going to have thinking, 12 hours till kickoff. Yeah. Hawk. Yeah. I would know. <laughs> Dude, I got some stories about Hawk, and I'm sure you do too. That dog is awesome. Oh, he's a legend. He, he's got a scratch on his cornea right now, and he's been – I drove Coach to the – me and Coach Mummy drove Hawk to the vet to get some – to get some new treatment for his eye while we were in Indy, but but I'm happy to say that you know he's he's doing better in Houston. Good. The eye was back open, and you know Good. we were really proud for that. <laughs> All right, uh, some coaches. Travis says 95 X short motion corners coming for us this fall. Love the thought process. Did you you came that up on drives? I drive a lot too. Do you find that driving actually like sparks the creativity? Where you can kind of just clear your mind and your and your mind just kind of wandered. Did you come up with anything else doing all that driving? Like maybe we should tweak this play or do that, or is it just this one play because of the X they knew you were running mesh? Well, that game, and I'm actually going to my Google Drive right now to look at the script because I had two or three ideas from a uh, on on that drive and, and coach. Like I called him basically, and I was like, "Yeah, they're more drawback stuff," and he's like, "Okay." I told him about it. He's like, yeah, they sound good. Put them in the third and long script. And that's about as far as, you know, that conversation went. Uh, you know, we, I think, like, we did, like, uh, it didn't really work for us like we thought it would. But they were running a lot of times against uh, something you don't see very often, against empty. They were running a true cover two. We saw that on film. Oh, wow. So what we were seeing is, you know, when, when number two or number one would work inside and number two would like go to the flats, that corner would just sit in the flat. So wow. we had like star six and then the Y right down the middle. And then we did uh, double shakes on the outside with shoot routes. So that, that's one that, you know, from feeling was like, oh, that's going to be really good. But in the game, they didn't do that as much. And so we called it and didn't really get much out of it. But you know, there was a few ideas like that, but I mean, it's, you know, for the most part, if you, you know, if I'm going down like the, the open script for that game, it's, you know, blue, blue Z fly. So that's our short motion. You could only do motions going in, in the spring league, but you could never cross another receiver. So the only other, the only motion you could do are motions going in, but you couldn't cross a receiver and you could do a jet sweep motion, but it had okay. to be even jet sweep. You couldn't cross another receiver. So like first so way to start. Like yeah. I mean, in the script is just as simple as you would think. It's blue Z fly 35. So ISO left. Star six sleeper. So the Y's in at a tight end. And basically he's check releasing to wherever grass is. Open flip oh X Larry. Open 31. Blue Z fly home run. We had done a reverse, the fifth play of the game, all six games of the season. So on this championship game, we did a fake reverse and threw a deep pass. We thought it was a pass interference. The refs didn't think so. Um, Bastards. Next play, blue F Randy. Open 6X shallow. Star 60 check. So, Ryan, pick your quick game, throw it. Blue flip 36, so just counter. Trip 62, we called it steal. That's just the, the Mike Leach, you know, stick with the wheel out of trips. Um, star Y jet, Y Larry, open 95. So, you know, you go to our open yellow zone, it's open six, X shallow, H shallow, Y shallow, Z shallow, open surge. So it's what literally teaches. the stuff that you're like told and it's like, is that really all there is to it? And it's, yeah, that's, that's all. And y'all are trying to go down all and run all of those plays like in order before you even call another one. Is that what you're trying to do during the open? Yeah, yeah. Basically, if you're between the 20s, that's all you're calling unless you get to third and long, unless the play in the script works for third and long. And sometimes coach just wants to stay with it so much that, you know, it's like 
there was a few times this year that you know he he'd, we'd have like um third and in inches and then but on the script it was supposed to be our like long reverse play and you know i would be like coach you know maybe we should just go 31 get the first down and then and, you know and, and then go back to the reverse and he's like no shut up we're sticking to the script and we run, we do that and we get like you know 30 yards and it's like all right it worked uh does he ever look at you like i know what the fuck i'm talking about does he ever do oh, anything oh, yeah, like that? oh yeah yeah all the time and <laughs> And then, like, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of fun all, all the time, all the time. And then, you know, I love it when I'll try, you know, for two drives to get him to run a certain play. And then we run it and we hit it for like 50 yards. And he's like, you know, he's like, I did a good job. I made a good call. There. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, it, you know, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's just, it's fun, man. You know, there's never a time that I think it's ever like when we're going back and forth that, that there's ever like either one of us, it's almost like we're ribbing each other kind of joking while we're serious on the sideline going through stuff. And, I love that. Yeah. And that kind of ties into one of the, one of the questions uh, again, Travis had, and if y'all haven't checked out his podcast, you need to, it's really good. Uh, those conversations that you have with coach mommy, would you agree mm -hmm. those conversations happen so easily because of the foundational pieces and rules in place or because you're working with professionals? Uh, you know, I would say that, probably a bit of both. I mean, probably two of the best things that I heard this year that gave me, I guess that made me feel um, accomplished through like all of the work in the years was um, you know, like the second week of the season, they talked about me on TV for like 10 minutes straight. And they were like, yeah, you know, mommy says that, that Bebo knows the offense just as well as he does. I loved hearing that. And then uh, Ernest Wilson, our DB coach, who's coached with Coach Mommy at New Mexico State previously, just brilliant coach. Uh, you know, he told me, he's like, I think Hal listens to you more than I've ever heard him listen to an assistant. And so, like, we, we have that – we have such a good off-the-field relationship that – I mean, he knows that I think the world of him as a coach and as a person. And, you know, we have such a good relationship that – Obviously, there's that, but you know, with everybody else, it's the same way. I mean, if there's nobody that would come up with some, if anybody came up to him with an idea, now he might hear it. I mean, and I, I definitely went through it several times too. That I'm like, we like the or Ryan would a lot like, this is great. Let's do this. He'd be like, no, I don't like it. And then you learn if you hear that, no, I don't like it. You just let it go. <laughs> but but you know when you. Uh, and so then that that happens a lot. That happens a lot. But um, you know, generally, he's going to hear it out. He'll hear it out first, and then if he doesn't like it, he doesn't like it. If he likes it, then puts it in. And you just better hope it works in practice. Well, I, I hate to do it, but little man, as you can tell, <laughs> he woke up and he's like, "Daddy, why the heck aren't you in bed?" So Stan, I appreciate you coming on, man. This was freaking. I had fun and I, I want to, I know you're a busy man. We're not going to talk about what the future has in store with you. I hope it, whatever it is, it works out. I would love to have you come back on and talk some more about the air raid and everything like that is, is open invitation to no. you, buddy. No, I mean, I, I'd love to any, anytime, you know, if you want to get together and just, whether it's on here or just privately and yeah. draw up some things. I mean, th there's a lot of yeah. cool wrinkles, you know, that we did in the, in the spring league that, you know, we're always happy to share. It's, I, I think that's what I love the most about this is that I guess it's the opposite kind. Of, I guess now they do the run and shoot certified thing or whatever, but it's really the opposite of the run and shoot from a sense of secretive to what is it uh, with um, yeah. John Jenkins? I saw you know as you say the secret, the secret <laughs> passing society or something, and we're kind of like that, uh, that was awesome talking to him. But yeah, yeah. he's oh he, he's he's incredible. He's man, yeah. But, you know, Just we're kind the of the stuff. opposite. We're like, what do you want to know? Let us show you how to do it. And what I love about that, and hold on, buddy, we're, we're going to go to bed real quick, um, <laughs> is how it still works. Even if – I mean, it's out there. I mean, the crazy thing is when you go through the Air Raid Certified, you, and then you heard the first time the XFL, he's calling – how's calling the same stuff that he teaches mm -hmm. you in that. Absolutely. You're, you're going through the script. 
it's the same stuff he talks about. So he's like 100% transparent and yet it still works. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it still works even when people know what you're doing? I mean, it's the same thing that he says on there. It's, it's about the repetition. It's about being better at running it than they are at stopping it. Because no matter what, you know, none of the past concepts say you throw to the Z every time. Yeah. Or you throw to the F every time. And it's, it's hard to, no matter how well you cover it, somebody's going to be open if the quarterback's going through the progression and you're making the reads right. And also with defenses, you know, people say, oh, well, you're yelling out the plays. They can hear the plays. They don't, they're trying to get lined up, especially, you know, when we're able to play fast. They don't have time to break down and say, oh, okay, well, this guy's going to do this, he's going to do that. And there's so many moving parts anyway with man or zone and, you know, did the quarterback signal this route for that guy? Or, you know, there's just so much to it that's – it's at the end of the day, it's, it's like we say, it's all about repetition. You get really good at it, and it doesn't matter if you know it's coming. You, can you stop it? Yeah. And – I love that. Luckily, whenever it counted this spring, the defenses it. couldn't stop it. <laughs> well, Stan, thank you so much for being here. Coaches, again, thank you all so much for being here. And until next time, let's continue to master the, master the air raid, score a crap ton of points, and win championships, baby. I will see you later. <laughs>